but it was so odd looking. It was like almost like it was running on two feet. Good morning. Hope you guys are having a great day. So I am not at home, as you guys can see. I am headed in to see the ENT. It's kind of like a follow up from where I had lost my hearing again, had all those annoying symptoms. Thank the Lord I'm feeling better. And the medicine seemed to help and I've got my hearing back. So I'm gonna go in just for a checkup. So I got back from the doctor. I had a good report from my doctor. My ear looked good. Of course, it wasn't really anything they could see inside because it's kind of basically an inner ear disorder. But not having any symptoms today, everything's good. He said it's just kind of a waiting game at this point just to watch and see how it does because it's behaving like Meniere's disease or a variant of it at this point because I don't have the vertigo. Hoping and praying that I don't get it, but that's in God's hands. And he said that I could continue to try to do a low sodium diet. I could take a diuretic and see if that helps prevent these attacks. Um, and if it doesn't, he gave me options that there are other things I can take, other things I can do. If it develops into the vertigo, there's other types of avenues and he was willing to do those things and just try to help preserve my hearing the best I can, as long as I can. And hopefully, maybe it won't happen again. I don't know. It's just so, there's so many variables and so unknown at this point. So I'm going to try not to stress about it. I'm going to leave it in the Lord's hands and we'll take it day by day. All right. So I have chores I've got to do today around here. I've got to get some stuff done so I can start cooking these tomatoes up and getting them in jars. Molly's got to have a haircut. She has been in need of one for a bit, so we're going to get to that today. Y'all have been down to the garden picking tomatoes. We just got done eating dinner, and I had to show you this massive tomato that I found down there. Look at this thing. It's huge. I need to take it up to the house and weigh it. I bet it's at least two pounds. Good morning. It is... Raining. We've had quite a bit of rain in the last several days. My mom, she says they've had no rain and she doesn't live far from me. So I guess it's just kind of spotty stuff, but I haven't had to water at all. She said that her dirt was just like powder. I'm like, no, it's mud here. I want to tell you guys what happened last night or what we're trying to figure out what happened. So we have cameras on our house and something tripped the camera back here close to the greenhouse in front of the woodshed. So we looked at the camera. Actually, we'll, and whenever the camera goes off, it notifies our phone, like immediately texts us the picture of the video. And it was a video of some animal. I don't think it quit raining. It was a video of an animal coming through here, or something coming through here. And it ran right here and tripped and fell and then ran right there and then that was the last we saw of it. So we watched it over and over and over and over trying to figure out what it was. Normally we can tell like by the way it runs because there is like, um, so the camera has not vision on it. So we can generally kind of make out what it is, but it was so odd looking. It was like almost like it was running on two feet. And you know, at first we thought, the first thing I thought was maybe that little baby deer you could see like a little bit of white on it or something but it definitely wasn't a deer and we thought maybe a raccoon and then i don't know a lot of different like things went through my mind like what it was but then we kind of zoomed in on it closer it got really pixelated though i'll try to put a clip of it on here in the video but and y'all can see for yourself or see what y'all think give me your opinions in the comments of what you think it is But it's almost like maybe that it went through. I don't know if it went back through there. I'll show you. I don't know if it went back through there and is like living back there inside the woodshed. I don't know. That's a little creepy. But my husband said, actually, so I said to my husband, I said, it almost looks like a monkey or something. And he's like, oh my gosh, I thought the same thing. So Seth came downstairs and I showed it to him and he's like, that looks like a monkey. So <laughs> I don't know, a baby Bigfoot or something. What do y'all think it is? It's super weird. I swear it looks like something on two feet. 
but so we're gonna keep monitoring the situation and maybe we'll like stake out down here in the greenhouse and see if we can see it run through here it was like it happened at midnight so I don't know weird maybe I could put like a trail cam out or something Okay, so if I'm going to go with pasta sauce, then I'm going to need 6 pounds per bag. So I'm going to need 12 pounds of tomatoes to do that. Basically, these have been frozen. So I'm going to go ahead and thaw them out in some hot water. And then I'm going to run them through this old food mill. And then I actually strain my tomatoes even more so through one of these because I really like a creamy sauce without any seeds whatsoever. And that's what I'm going to do. Now, if I were using fresh tomatoes, then all I would do is have to put them in here. I wouldn't have to, because this was a fresh one under my house, and I wouldn't have to run them in the hot water, but because these have already been frozen, I'm gonna have to soften them up. If you've got some that you're picking and you're gonna go ahead and make salsa right away, then you just go ahead and put them in here. So this was the tomato that I had just gotten out of the garden, and obviously there you see the sauce. And some of the smaller tomatoes have little seeds, so they end up going through this. And that is why I will run them through this. Now, the holes are pretty small, so only some really tiny, fine seeds will fit through it. And a lot of times it's just the seeds from the cherry tomatoes. But like I said, I just run it through this just to be safe because I like my sauce like that. This was a huge tomato I picked last night, and I was curious on how much it was going to weigh. So let's check it out and see. One pound, 7.2 ounces. Y'all had a two pounder last year, so I'm gonna keep looking and see what the biggest one I can find. I know there's some down there on the vine that are quite large, but they're still green. This was the one tomato that I food milled, and this is the skins left. Pretty easy, so I'm just gonna take the skin out. And you can put it on your compost pile or give it to your chickens or you can actually dehydrate these as well. So there's a lot of things you can do with it if you want to. And I'm just going to continue on. See you guys in a bit. There's my Mater Miller. <laughs> Okay, so I've got all the tomatoes put through the meal and I'm gonna do one extra step and strain them a little bit more. But it looks pretty good. We're just gonna run them through and get all of the seeds. Most of the seeds were left behind in the food meal, but there's a few little ones, probably not enough to make a difference, but I'm gonna go ahead and run it through anyways. And I got quite a bit of sauce from those tomatoes. It was about 12 pounds of tomatoes. Y'all check out what I found. I found my trail cam. I didn't think it still worked, but apparently it just had some bad batteries in it. So we're gonna put it out tonight and we're gonna try to catch this unknown creature. It's raining again. No water in the garden or the beans today. I've run everything through this little sifter right here and got all the extra seeds out that were stuck in there and not a whole lot, but enough to make a difference for me. So that's what was left over. And the rains have picked up. It is coming down. Oh, wow. Finally got the sauce cooked. We're gonna go ahead and put it in the jars. So I got 11 pint jars and I actually have enough for a small jar. I may just go ahead and freeze it and cook it this week.
going to use one of my Tatler lids. They are reusable. They come with a little gasket. When you reuse them, you want to make sure the smooth side goes against the little ridges so it will seal right. Now I have had some fails on these. These you have to kind of do a little bit more, you have to be a little bit more exact when you do these just because there's specific way they go on and, and are tightened. These are tightened much looser than the ball canning lids. Basically you put them on, make sure it's straightened. And when it starts spinning, that's it. And when you get them out of the canner, you have to tighten these rings up as tight as you can by hand and then take them off the next day after they're cooled. These, of course, you don't do that. You just do them the old fashioned way. Well, y'all, that was a long day in the kitchen. I got a lot done though. I got about 12 pint jars. So that was a pretty productive day. I'm gonna go down and pick some more tomatoes. We're gonna check the chickens. And then I'm gonna come up here and water some stuff in my greenhouse. And then we're gonna put our trail cam up. We're gonna try to find a good spot for it tonight. Y'all, the guys are out there to put the trail cam up. Let's go see what they're doing. What do y'all think? Where are you putting it? Well, that's where, that's where it was last night where we saw it on the camera, like right there. You think it went back in the woods somewhere? Yeah, probably. I said I need to get me a GoPro and like get it, put it on like a stick or something and put it like back through here. We can see if there's something back there. Y'all check out these cherry tomatoes. Oh my, oh me oh my. I'm gonna start picking them. Oh, I'll say, I wasn't sure if it's ready, but yeah, I think it is. All right, back to watering and then headed down to stake those tomatoes. Headed down here to check out these tomatoes that had fallen. We had a pretty good storm here earlier today. Oh, let's see, what have we got? I should have brought a basket in here. I did not do that. Why did I not? Yeah, I'm gonna have to go get a bucket. Tomatoes are gonna be the death of me. <laughs> Do what? My fault. You told me to grow all these. Nuh-uh, 60. And then plus the ones that come up on their own. I couldn't control that. Okay, we're back. Ooh. Ew, I just stepped on one, it squashed. It made a squishy noise. Okay, what is in here? Oh, let's get that one off. Some of them, oh, that's good. Okay, come on. So next year I'm gonna have all that garden fabric. It's gonna look nice, or at least that's the way I, I'm seeing it. Let me see it. It's a big one. I think it's bigger than the one I got. Here, you can grab it for me. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh my gosh, that thing's huge. I've looked at so many tomatoes today. Maybe that's why I overlooked it, because I'm just sick of looking at them. 